are the Dragons, five of Britain's wealthiest and most enterprising business leaders. Over the coming weeks, they'll make or break the dreams of dozens of budding entrepreneurs. In troubled times, the second-hand economy often flourishes. And it's there you can find our next entrepreneur, Dominic Ricciardi. He thinks his business can expand, but will the Dragons agree? Hello, I'm Dominic Ricciardi. Um, I'm here today looking for investment of £100,000. In 1996, I started a company called Cage Equip UK, and in that time, become one of the largest suppliers of reconditioned catering equipment. We deal with very large companies from Chorus Hotels, McDonald's, Marks and Spencers. The reason is, is because as you can see in front of you, we've, uh, we recondition our equipment to a very, very high standard. Um, in the last three or four years, I've realised there's a massive gap in the market. So, we are looking to roll out a franchise proposition across the UK. Each franchisee will have a territory of around about 3,500 customers and each customer with estimated spends about £5,000 on their catering equipment. And that's an average of £17.5 million per territory value of a customer spend. So, um, yeah, I'm looking for £100,000 investment and that's for 10% share of the new business, which is the franchise all. So I'm uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Fluent pitch from an experienced entrepreneur. Dominic Ricciardi wants to spread his business wings and move into the world of franchising. To do so, he needs a cash injection of £100,000 in return for a 10% equity stake. Deborah Meaden is looking for a little more clarity. Dominic, hello. Hi. I'm Deborah. Hi, Deborah. Uh, so, Dominic, you've got an existing business. Yes, I have. Turns in a profit every year? Uh, this year, made 170000 And you're offering an investment in a new... A new business, yeah. A new business. Yeah. So, what's your thinking behind setting up a separate business from the business that you've currently got? Um, I'll just explain a little bit of background. Um, the company at the moment, we supply reconditioned catering equipment, and it won't be separate to the franchise. As we, as we sell the territories and the country gets taken over, then the equipment, that come, the inquiries that come through to our office now will eventually be filtered down to the okay. franchises anyway. Um, right, I've opened a bit of a can of worms there I wasn't expecting to open, so it's going to be a separate business that's still completely integrated in the original one. Yes, yeah, so they've got two individual businesses. At the moment, we're currently trading, selling reconditioned catering equipment. No, you don't need to repeat it, because I got that. Sorry. But if it works with my money, yeah. then um, you phase out your existing business. Yes. And if it doesn't work, then it's actually okay, because you've ring-fenced your £170,000. Well, it's only like any other business, isn't it? People have got more than uh, I'm one. I'm actually, business. do you know, I'm not going to ask any more, because I'm fascinated to see if any of these other dragons could see any attractive point in that whatsoever. It's a rather frustrating opening exchange. Can the dazed entrepreneur regain his footing with Theo Pafitis? Dominic, um, in a business transaction, you've got to have two happy partners. Yeah. Well, I can appreciate that, but we haven't talked about my existing company, and there could be a possibility that we could integrate the whole thing. The only reason, the only reason that I've done it this way is purely because it's a totally new and separate business. So, actually, you've come in and said, I want to sell you this. Yeah. But actually, I want to sell you something else. Yeah. It's up to you to guess what I want to sell you. That's mm. not business. Right. And the investment opportunity is so ridiculous that a man who's been in business, how long? 15 years. 15 years. It's not ridiculous. I've got to stop you there, actually. It's not ridiculous. You haven't even asked the right questions yet. Before oh, haven't can... I? No. Oh, good. Good. No, yes. what's, what's the right questions, yeah, Dominic? Firstly, you haven't even asked anything about the business. I don't, I've worked, but you know, sometimes in life, after yeah. you've been in business for a very long period of time, yeah. you have a gut instinct. And when somebody offers you 10% of a new business yeah. with all the risk in it, you automatically, do you know what, put barriers up and think yeah. negatively of that opportunity. I look to invest in partnership with people to work with them in a very honest, transparent way. 
Well, I can appreciate that, and actually the words you say resonate with me very much, and that's the way I am. I am very transparent. I think what's happened is Deborah's asked me a question, and it's gone on to yours, and I've probably come out with the wrong answer. No, no, hold on a minute. I told you that the sole reason that I had no more questions was because I didn't like the existing structure. Okay. And that would have been a brilliant moment to say, don't get hung up on that, Deborah. We can discuss that. Yeah, I apologise for that then. Maybe I was a little bit sort of nervous. A little humility goes a long way in the den. Perhaps now Dominic can get his pitch back on track. But Peter Jones has concerns of an altogether different nature. Dominic, um, there's something a little bit lacklustre, there's something not so exciting about the pitch. It's not a sexy business. <laughs> it's not. No. But Dominic, you've done well. You've got a business, it makes money. So let's get into the detail of the franchise opportunity. So what do I pay, franchisee? What do I pay? Um, Forty-one thousand is the franchise cost. And what do they pay ongoing every year? It's eight percent management fee of their turnover, and there's two percent marketing as well. Okay. If I'm now signed up, do I get some immediate business from you? There's no immediate business. No, it's a, uh, what we do is uh, telemarket the area. Uh, for introduction so they can start going in and seeing customers. Plus the fact that the first three to five franchisees get uh, me, which is it's a big part because obviously I know the industry, but I'm going to work for the so new franchisees. I'm lucky enough to be one of your first five franchisees, yeah. and it's going to be great. It's going to be great and for the And if I'm food. not? Well, no, I mean, the idea is the first five franchisees are the ones that are going to make it. You know, we need to get those established. That's okay, the foundation. But Dominic, the, do you understand that you're not really offering any real true value here? Right, no, I don't. Because imagine. why couldn't I do that myself? Being 15 years in the industry, I've, I've become one of the, the main people within reconditioned equipment um, and uh, I've emptied my head and we've built an operations manual like that on how to buy, sell, recondition. Well, how do I buy? So how do I buy that one there you've got there? There is a strategy that we use, there are quite a few strategies that we use to buy equipment, it's very easy. Well, give me an example. Uh, well, one could be a part exchange, for example. There's no way to buy. Well, offering a part sell. exchange is a, is, a, is a strategy that's deployed that you think only you can bring. I thought you, what you were going to say to me is, look, I've got a deal with a manufacturer exclusively in the UK to take and pick up all their refurbished products. Well, we do have a lot of that. We deal with a lot of manufacturers. And one of our big markets is B-grade equipment where we buy... Have you got any exclusive deal with a manufacturer that ring fences your business model? No, no. But, you know, you, it, it's very difficult to get into this. It's, it is very difficult. You know, Dominic, I've got, what, over 60 kitchens. And when one of my facilities requires second hand equipment, they use a local person who comes in and does all that. Yes. But why would they want to buy a franchise? Because right. they can just do it, they can just sell them, just start doing it. They can, but uh, it's not just about reconditioned cage equipment. We have got some uh, new equipment as new well. New equipment, yep, okay. Uh, sundry supplies, so that's all the chef's whites, crockery, cutlery, plates and yep. forks and all that. Uh, chemical supply. Yep. Service and maintenance. Yep. And um, oil filtration. Yep. So which of these couldn't somebody do on their own rather than buy a franchise from you? Well, I mean, anybody can do anything uh, at the end of the day, I suppose, but uh, I suppose if the most difficult to do is the reconditioned equipment. How much second-hand equipment did you sell last year? Second-hand only. All we, we, that's all we did last year was reconditioned equipment, a million, million pounds. But if all you did was sell reconditioned equipment, yeah. you didn't sell any new equipment? No. Dominic, how a franchise works is so someone buys a franchise from somebody who's already doing the thing that they're buying the franchise in. Yeah, yeah. But you're going to sell a franchise to someone who's going to pay for something that you don't even do yourself. Yeah, that, I mean, that, that is right. I mean, we were... That's why I'm not going to buy a franchise or be involved with you selling franchises, and that's why, Dominic, I'm out. OK. The turbulence in the den may have eased, but nevertheless, Dominic loses his first dragon. And it looks like Hilary DeVay has reached a decision too. You cannot franchise. You can't. You've got to have brand awareness. You've got to have a database readily available. Now, you mentioned in the beginning of your pitch that they would have access to 3,500 customers. Yeah. Where are those 3,500 customers now? They're not our customers. That's what their territory consists of. So they're not, they're not our customers. Dominic, please. Waking up. 
please. Well, every business... For your own sake, yeah. waking up. No, I will do. I know because I'm going to take on board heavily, but every business know, has to you've, start somewhere. You've no intellectual property, you've no database, you've no track record. Go back, do your homework, get your financial modelling, and then you can look these prospective franchisees in the eye and say, I know it will work. Yeah. I've got to say, I'm out. Thank you. Dominic, I would advise you just don't go down the franchise route. Um, it's not a business that I can invest in, so that's the only reason why I'm going to say to you I'm out. Dominic, um, you have a very professional business by the sound of things. Yeah. But I did say earlier that you weren't transparent. We do ask questions. And the whole idea of asking questions is trying to find out as much about them. But, you know, you expect people to volunteer things that they think are relevant. Yeah. I can tell you it doesn't cut it for me. This is not investable. Okay. I'm out. Three dragons out in quick succession. And Deborah Meaden is all that stands between Dominic and complete failure in the den. This has probably surprised you the way this has gone. It probably shouldn't have surprised you. But it did get us off to a bad yes, start. I think it did, yeah. Let's park that to one side, because yeah. actually I've moved on from that. Yeah, yeah. I'm now looking at the business proposition. Yeah. Now, you've got a reputation yeah. in the industry you're in, yeah. but you are moving into a new industry, and the only bit you've done of it is the trading of the catering equipment. There is another bit. Can I just jump in just very quickly, um, if you don't mind? Um, 2003, I did set up another company, a sister company, which supplies only new equipment. And um, last year, um, they did a uh, four and a half million turnover. You, you didn't think of actually sharing that with us any earlier? Believe it or not, I didn't want to complicate it. I made a mess of it, talking about two. So you can imagine I threw the third one in. <laughs> <laughs> Dominic. Sorry. Um, Sorry, Deborah. I completely accept this is a, you know, it, this is a hot place in the den, you know, <laughs> and a lot, is, a lot is relying on this. I completely yeah. get all of that. My advice to you, is if you're right about this, do it. Be your own first franchisee. The only thing that would convince me to hand you my money would be because you could say to me, I've done it. Yeah. Track record. Yeah. Whole different ball game. Yeah. I mean, we... Uh, uh, Dominic, no. is, are you going to be able to tell me you've got track record in the franchise model? No, I haven't then. Not in the, not in the, I haven't a good majority of it. I won't be investing. I'm out. Yeah, thank you. Dominic may not have succeeded in getting investment, but he at least leaves with some sound advice from the experienced multimillionaires. millionaires